This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. We're broadcasting on over 750 stations on Pacifica and NPR and low-power FM and college and community radio stations on public access TV and PBS TV stations and both TV satellite networks on DISH Network, Channel 9415, Free Speech TV, 9410, Link TV, and on Direct TV, Channel 375. And we're video and audio podcasting on democracynow.org. Our guest is Bill Greider. He is with The Nation magazine. His forthcoming book is called Come Home America, The Rise and Fall and Redeeming Promise of Our Country. Uh, so you're on the train yesterday. You bump into Bill Parsons. The Richard tr- Parsons. Richard yeah. Parsons, rather. The, you, you don't bump into Richard Parsons. He's the, he was the leader of uh, Time Warner. He's just now been made chairman of the board at Citigroup. And you've been calling and, for the nationalizing well, of I banks like Citigroup. Well, I think they should just get it over with and close Citigroup down because it's insolvent. Did you and tell that, Richard Parsons this I on the train? I, that would be, first of all, impolite. But secondly, we were in what the uh, Amtrak calls the quiet car, where you do <laughs> not talk. So that's my excuse for not badgering him. But, uh, but you know what he was doing. He, had, he, he, he witnessed what him. happened to the three executives of the, of the auto companies when they flew their private jet to Washington with their hands out for money. And he decided... Given that Citigroup has now received, what, $45 billion straight up and another $300 billion in guarantees, it would, it would, it would be uh, awkward for him to fly in to, to his meeting with the president. The, Obama had a bunch of corporate execs in yesterday to lead cheers for them and get them going. And uh, good for him, right? He's, he's down with the folks. Of course, it was in the, he's on the Acela train, which is the fast train. Well, I guess the question is, is Citigroup down with the folks? And what has happened to the billions of dollars that have been given to bail out these companies that they are not accounting for? And it's not just President Bush. It's not just Henry Paulson. The Democrats joined with the Republicans and this is supporting. This has been, up to now, bipartisan uh, failure. And... It continues not to have the crucial feature, which is answering the question, what does the public get for this money? And this sounds out unbelievable, but it's true, literally true. The government, Treasury, and the Federal Reserve pumps this money in and demands almost nothing in return in, 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 in terms of, uh, of uh, prescribed behavior, guaranteed conduct, we will do this, we'll stop doing that, so forth and so on. So these guys are all going out. And, you know, Citigroup was embarrassed just last week because it, somebody revealed that they had on order and were about to get a new $50 million executive jet. And that's why Richard Parsons is on the train this week, because as soon as the public finds that out, they're thinking, oh, no, they've done it again. And, and it's just very simple political logic for Washington to say we have to exercise control over these institutions at some level of penetration to stop this misbehavior first and then to make them do some positive things that the country needs right now. And in the case of Citigroup... You say it's insolvent. Yeah, that's not an opinion of mine. I mean, I I talk to people who are really serious bank... uh, uh, specialists and and they've been saying that for many months. It's the the so-called toxic assets in there, uh, and this is not unique to Citigroup, but the toxic assets have built up in a way that you that the government, if it tried to do this for every of the every one of the largest banks, it would make this stimulus package look like peanuts. It's, it's huge. It's tr- It's 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 maybe a couple of trillion dollars still out there. Um, I think you can get pretty old-fashioned about this. The bank examiners go in and they make Citigroup lay it all out, and at some point they they can decide this bank is too is too gone to save. It's too big to save, and it's got too much failure already in it. So we will we will uh, we will organize its liquidation. The other alternative is to nationalize it and and begin to deconstruct the bad pieces and build new banks. I mean, to me, this is the exciting prospect. This is boring to a lot of people, but it's, but it's the heart of the matter. If you don't nationalize it, 
then you're simply sort of prettying up, uh, you know, the old roses and hoping that they bloom again. What government should be doing now, and it's a long process, is rebuilding the banking and financial system across the entire country so that it serves the economy, serves the society, rather than being these, these little citadels of high profit and uh, extraordinary uh, salaries. It, it, what happened in the last 25 years is that everything got concentrated in big guys, including really strong regional banks that got swallowed up by the bigger banks. Thousands of smaller community banks got wiped out. Either they got sold or they, or they closed down, etc. This is a huge project and, and we won't get back to what Americans at large can regard as an equitable and prosperous economy until that structure is rebuilt. Citigroup is not going to do that. Even if you prop it up for 10 years, it's not going to do that. What are the forces that would do that? Politics, actually. I mean, and people around the country. Uh, I've done a lot of reporting over the years on the ground with just people in different parts of this country uh, trying to, as I described them in my, in my earlier book, trying to reinvent capitalism trying to make it not just humane, but, but socially um, supportive to industry, small businesses, in, consumers, workers, etc. They're terrific people. They're very smart. A number of them are veterans of Wall Street. They did a few years making high salaries uh, and ripping and running in the, in the markets. And they said, that's not what my life is about. And they went to Oklahoma or California or wherever and started firms that are investment firms that operate on very different principles. If I were king or if I had the president's ear, I would say, get those people into the White House now. There are thousands of them. Can you think of examples? Well, I, I'm, the names are, there's a, I just heard from her, this, uh, I'm blank, gonna blank her name, but she's from Portland or somewhere on the West Coast. She has, uh, I think it's called 21st Century Investments. I don't hold me to the names, but she is one of those people, and she just sends out a report every once in a while. These are, the, these are the companies we've just invested in. And, of course, the investment standards of those companies, for those companies, are the same standards any of us would want to apply. Are they sound um, ecologically? Do they treat their workers with uh, equity and fairness and, and include them in the decision making? Are they, are they viable? Do they have a future? Are they making something the country will need? Um, all I'm getting at is we, if, we, if, we, if we get our heads out of Washington for a minute and look across the country, there's enormous potential for reinvention and innovation, and, and not just in that area, but in others. And that's what I'm that's what I'm hoping this president will 